So uh, yeah, in, uh, in a few moments, we'll be giving everybody in the audience an opportunity to, to come up to the microphones uh, and say a few words. Um, I wanted to first, though, just reiterate what a fantastic job uh, Mark and Athena's former students, who I'm looking at right here, Shah and Svetlana and Sam, and particularly Andre, who I think bore the brunt of this, have done putting this together. It's, it's really been a very meaningful day and I think it's gone off flawlessly, and I'm hoping that we can do a round of applause for them. Uh, so I've known Athena since I was in graduate school here at UCSD in the, in the 90s, uh, and I have to say she was a giant then, and uh, I always felt a little bit intimidated by her. Um, and that was not the reason that I left and went away and did various things for <laughs> a decade and a half. Um, but then in 2015, Athena was really instrumental, was the point person in, in recruiting uh, me and my wife, Stephanie Delawa, to come back here to UCSD. Uh, and we started at the beginning of this year um, and had a little bit of time then um, to talk with Athena. Uh, actually, she was the co-mentor for my student, Amanda Barkley Levison, who's in the back's F32 grant, uh, which scored a 10, a perfect score, um, and was funded. Um, and so I, I think uh, I was one of the last people to, to work with Athena on a, on a grant application. And I regret that um, we didn't have an opportunity to work more closely together, uh, but I'm very happy to be working with her uh, former students uh, to, to see that work to fruition. Um, so as you've heard all day, Athena wore many different hats. One of them was the vice chair for basic research in the Department of Psychiatry. Uh, and that's one of the hats that I've inherited uh, from her. That's the only hat I've inherited from her that I know of. Um, and that's very special to me. And uh, one of the earlier speakers said that they often think, what would Athena do in this situation? And that was very familiar to me. As I do that job, I think to myself, how would Athena do this? And how has Athena handled these things? Um, so just another example of the kind of role model she's been for many of us. Um, I, uh, I used to teach a class to students, undergraduates in Chicago, and I would compare, the, among other things, the lifespan of mice and the lifespan of humans. And I would take a, a moment to remind them that we should expect to have about 30,000 days in our lives. Uh, and one of the things that we're all struggling with today is that Athena had closer to 20,000 days. Um, and that seems unfair. Uh, uh, I remember one particular day after ACNP uh, in 2005 in Hawaii when uh, Mark and Athena and Stephanie and I went snorkeling uh, at the Mauna Kea just after the meeting was over. Um, and I remember that Mark and Stephanie had what is probably the rational strategy, which is they mostly stayed in one place and they let the fish come to them. Um, but Athena and I, for reasons that I'll leave you to speculate on, decided to take the alternative strategy, which was to kind of swim out and, and keep looking for the fish and keep looking in the next little area to see if we couldn't find something better than what we had just seen. Um, and as I've listened to the talks today uh, about her really aggressive zest for life, I think that's a very fitting memory, that she was always out there looking around the next corner, looking for the next thing um, in a really beautiful place, in a really beautiful world. And so that's the, that's the day in Athena's life that I'll remember and the place that I'll remember. Um, and I'm happy to have had that time with her. And uh, we now are going to have the microphones open. And I'm hoping that a few brave souls will uh, get up. I see one already. We'll get up and say a few words. Athena truly was one of the most remarkable people that I've ever met. And having been her mentee for over eight years, I've just always admired her strength and her courage so very much. Um, a lot of people today have talked about how she really just fostered her trainees, trainees, and she was also always there for me, to really support me throughout when I started in her lab in 2006 as an internship, uh, and then throughout my pre- and postdoctoral careers. Um, but as many of you know, it's often also been very tough 
um, trying to live up to the full potential that Athena saw in me. And often, it just, it really took me a while to understand. I remember Stella described how when we were writing manuscripts, there were often just so many versions that had to go back and forth, just to make sure that everything was perfect. But then I wrote this postdoctoral fellowship application, and Athena looked at it, I think, one and a half times, and I was really taken aback. I didn't really understand. And then afterwards, it was time to write the recommendation letter for this postdoctoral fellowship. She sat me down in her office, and she explained to me how the wonderful job that I did preparing this all independently really showed how I was going to succeed in the research that I, I proposed in this application. And so it, 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 it took a while sometimes, but it's just, I remember Athena very fondly, and I miss her so dearly. And she, even though I've fallen off the academic track, she really does continue to inspire me every day from the meticulousness with which she approached all aspects of science to the way she goes after her ambitions. And I miss her very dearly, and I'm incredibly grateful that I can be here today with you to honor her legacy. Thank you. My name is Davide Dulcis. I'm a faculty in the Department of Psychiatry. And I met Athena in 2014, a few months before I joined the department. From the first time I met Athena, I was impressed by her enthusiasm and passion for science always ready to listen carefully and contribute with insightful scientific questions. When I approached her for, with a problem of any sort, she seemed always to have a clean, clear plan in mind and to be one step ahead, as if she had already thought about that problem before and already came up with a tangible solution for me. <laughs> she was one of the driving force leading the basic research program in our department I will miss her determination in pursuing her vision to create a strong research group in psychiatry. She has been a great mentor to me. I will never forget the day I submitted to her a six-page Word document asking for revisions. It was the night of December 22nd, 2015, so two days, two nights before Christmas Eve, at 8 p.m., when I finally sent it to her after a long day working on it. I knew how busy Athena was being the vice chair of research affairs in the department, so I didn't really expect her to get back to me anytime soon. But then when I checked my inbox mail at 10.30 p.m. that night, very same night, there it was. My document had been carefully revised with track changes, with detailed comments and numerous suggestions throughout. It would have taken me hours to just address those comments. This is just a random memory from my professional interactions with Athena, but it's precious to me because I think it speaks clearly of how Athena cared about her colleagues, especially new recruits who need guidance and support. I would like to remind myself and everyone in the audience today that we are surely going to miss Athena for being such a talented scientist, a generous mentor, and a true leader, but I feel that in spite of her sudden departure, her ideas and thoughts that she carefully seeded among her trainees, her colleagues, and family will continue flourishing in our minds, maybe providing some of that support that we terribly miss. Thank you. Dear Mark, so on behalf of myself and Jeff and Craig and Colleen at the Vanderbilt Center for Neuroscience Drug Discovery, 
we were profoundly, profoundly um, saddened when we first heard the news about Athena's passing. And as I said at ECMP, a bright light has gone out in the world. There will be, there never will be someone like her. She was utterly extraordinary. And for me today, I felt it the way that Alan best described it. Um, I was always tremendously impressed. I was um, by all of her scientific, uh, her writing, her presentations. But it was so moving to hear so many of you talk about all the years that she spent with you, training you uh, as collaborators. Um, but I wanted to get up importantly to share what I shared at ECMP. Uh, because for all of you who are mentors, you may wonder how you can have impact in the world. And I think today that this is really about legacy. There is on Broadway a very famous musical called Hamilton. And there's a song. And it talks about, George Washington's talking to Hamilton. He says, you know, be careful about your legacy. You know, who lives, who dies, who tells your story. And today, you guys told an extraordinary story of the life of Athena Marcoux. It really meant a tremendous amount to me. And what I wanted to share with you about my experience with Athena was that she was not a direct collaborator. She was not a direct colleague. But 10 years ago, contrary to John's comment about coming to the dark side of going to industry, uh, I had been in industry for 10 years. And the low-hanging fruit were gone. The good models were gone. And so I made the jump through a recruitment from Jeff Kahn to Vanderbilt. I thought I might stay for a couple years. Well, the rest is history because I stayed for 10. But in my first year, I arrived to find out that, uh, as Jeff pointed out, we'll see this little room over here. It's got a coffee maker. We can move it, and you can set up the vivarium there. Within the first three, and I had what was, I, I call my proverbial holy shit moment. <laughs> so how does Athena come into this? And why was she so important in my life? Because within the first three months of making this transition and really tremendously second guessing what I was doing with my life, I went to ACMP and I had what I call one of those seminal discussions that you have with a mentor. And I had a three hour dinner with her that confirmed and transformed and changed the course of my life. Because during this dinner, she confirmed how profoundly important it was that I'd made the decision I did to transition from industry to do more deep mechanistic work in an academic environment. But she did something more. One of the things that most of you who trained with her for years got to experience that I had for that short window was how deeply honest she was about her own experience. I reflect on that conversation, sometimes daily, depending upon what's happening, but certainly every few months. I think about the things that she said specifically about the choices that you make and what impact it will have, and to be brave and courageous in your decisions, to be highly translational in the science that you choose to do, even if in the beginning you don't get the grants or you don't get the accolades that you're going in the right direction. Trust your gut. I think for me, I was at a point where I really needed to hear from her something else. And that was something that we haven't talked about today, which is where she very honestly, as I talked about at ECMP, talked about successes but also failures or what she felt were her shortcomings or the things that she not so much regretted but she might do differently. I can't tell you how important that is when you're making transitions in your career. Please, for you, those of you who are mentors, do that for your trainees. I think that many of you expressed what she did for, for all of you on a daily basis, but that one conversation made the difference. I stayed for the last 10 years, and of course, many of you know I'm, I'm, part of, I'm director of translation for the academic drug discovery work at, uh, at Vanderbilt. Um, Mark. Thank you for today. Thank you to all of you for sharing this. My life, as I said at ECMP, is forever changed. My career is forever changed by that single conversation with Athena Marku. Thank you.
Hi, so I'm Murray Steen. I'm a psychiatrist here and uh, had the privilege of uh, working with Athena for a couple of years as, uh, in her role as uh, vice chair for basic science. Uh, just sort of a, a, st a brief story. So, um, so Athena uh, was one of the strongest women I've, I've ever met, and I say that being married to a very strong woman. Um, and uh, s just last March, Athena was in hospital, and uh, my wife had had a bad bike accident. She was in hospital. She was in Scripps, and Athena was at UCSD just across the street. And we literally, um, you know, we could look out the window and see, see UCSD, and we were thinking of transferring over there. Uh, there weren't any beds, and it happened, Athena, I can't remember if she called me or I called her, I mean, Athena's in the hospital, and she was calling about some work-related thing, she wanted to be sure something was handled right, that when I was at the cabinet meeting that I, you know, did what I was supposed to do, or what she would have done if she'd been there. Um, and so I said, you know, my wife, or is in hospital, she had a bike accident, and Athena's, you know, in hospital, she goes, well, you know, I, I just got a, a private room here, I've been waiting for, for quite a while, and and um, I don't think there's any other rooms in the hospital, but if, if Aura wants, she can come share the room with me. And, and, I'm, and, she, and then Athena pauses and goes, you know, there aren't very many people I would share my hospital room with, but I, I think I'd share it with Aura. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember just feeling uh, so touched by that. I told Aura, uh, who, who just, you know, said, yeah, I'd, I'd share a room with Athena. <laughs> so um, that's, that's just the kind of person she was, and uh, Mark, Aura, and I are really, uh, we really miss her. This is the last call. Okay, there's a, res oh, yeah, Olivier? <coughs> Hi, so I had a couple of stories with uh, Athena. The first one was maybe a month before, after I, I got here. So 10 years ago, I got to Scripps as a postdoc working with George Cove. And he asked me to work on nicotine self-administration. And Athena was working there. And I was left by myself trying to find a room to do it. And I found an empty room in, at Scripps. So we're going to use that. So it was Athena's room, right? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I knew all her work by heart, OK, all her paper. And I never met her before. It was a month after. And she invited me in her office. And I was like, oh, that's great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Looking to have a great discussion. And in about five minutes, I realized I should never, ever mess with that woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then four years later, we met again in Dublin for a nicotine conference. And I was presenting my work. And then we had a very long discussion afterwards. And we disagreed on on the hypothesis at the end. And what was said was right. She was highly uh, critical, but in a positive way. And she challenged me and challenged me, you, you believe in it? Try it. Try it. Prove me that I'm wrong. And, uh, and four years later, we had three papers on it. And I never had the chance to thank her for that. So I'm going to do it today. Thank you, Athena. Mm. Okay. Well, I strategically organized this so that I would not have to say anything because I wasn't sure I'd be able to say anything and keep it together. But I, I do want to just thank everybody here, especially the presenters. Um, I want to encourage Athena's group to keep on. Um, I mean, you are right now the, the, the focal point of her legacy. Obviously, her legacy is much broader than that. Um, but uh, she, like my mentor, uh, always felt that in a career you, you generate data, you generate papers, but the, the most lasting legacy of a scientific career are the people that you trained and, and memories that you leave. So it's been a spectacular day. Um, I really thank everybody for participating and doing what she wanted. And what I want is to 
remember her and celebrate uh, her life and her accomplishments. Thank you. Uh, by the way, um, we are going to have a reception um, inside and outside. It's probably not so hot outside now. Um, and also, if, if you would like um, a copy of the movie, we have DVDs. We don't have them here, but if there's a sign-up sheet uh, outside, and if you leave enough information that I can figure out where to send it, um, we'll, we'll have some made, and uh, you're welcome to it. So, thank you all. Thank you.